previously on Skint. In Birmingham, Vernon Burgess was homeless and searching for shelter. It's first come first, so honestly, it's just a life to get a bed. I'll be lucky if I get in there. In Bristol, Tony Clemente had to pawn all his goods until payday. Yeah, that's right. that, but that's my fruit cut. When he got his monthly pension, it was a cause for celebration. Yes, thank you, Lord! <laughs> when you have no money and no access to credit, life can be tough. Every day is a battle when you're skint. <laughs> Vernon Burgess hasn't had to look too far to solve his housing problem. Oh, this is my daughter's place, yeah? No, there was actually a, a arson attack in there. Went up, rolled up to the second floor where the last... Where the arsonists came again, like, you know? And there were places like this all over Birmingham. It's my daughter's little flat, where she lives with my grandson. People don't know I've got a daughter, I've got a daughter twin, so... Such a wonderful girl, so pleasant and caring. You know, so intelligent as well. Even the, the doctor said to me, you know, your daughter's so stunning. They don't think I come from the same bloke. <laughs> yeah, she's a good, she's a good little girl. She, you know, I had no to say, Martin. And she let me stay here. Oh, I'll put the kettle on. Have oh, you got 53 marks? I'll get a pint of milk, mate. I've run around this local shop here. I mean, you can all have a cup of coffee if you want. <laughs> Kath and Tony got together six months ago and have been struggling to make ends meet ever since. Today, though, they have a more pressing concern. The last thing I remember, all right, I'd had a drink, I must admit, and I was sat around just looking about, just, you know, relaxing. And I remember just looking over at these couple of people and then I don't remember much more. And I do not remember, like, the fight. I do recollect pulling someone about and uh, that, that what came out was I called him a lot of racial names, and I don't recollect that at all. Kath's facing a charge of assault. I park in here. They're all parking here anyway. How long do you stay here on empty yellow? I don't know. Sure. But they've all parked on yellow double lines, didn't they? Right. right. We're all ready? Yeah. Well, I'm pleading not guilty because I'm actually done anything that I know of, it was really bad anyway. i just come to face them, you know? Mm -hmm. I could have not turned up, but I have. <laughs> Vern's off to his day job. He's been selling the big issue for the past three years. Thank you, Val. Come on, boys and girls. I brought you all the big issue today, folks. It's more fun than your son. It's less stress than the Express. But it's easier to read than the Times. <laughs> he makes an 80 yes, pence profit for every copy he sells. We guess you, love. No probs. Although business is good, he's looking at a career change. I'm just still struggling on with my magazines, really. So my main income comes from my magazines. But, like, I, I'm just a bit fed up with doing it because I've done it for a few years, you know. And uh, I, I want to go into the antiques, doing antiques. Yeah, I've got a few collectibles, you know. A few antiques and different collectibles. Old postcards and various antiques and collectibles are collected. But I really need my trader's license because I could be trading in antiques up the road on there. But I, I, I need to get the trader's license. Otherwise, the police just come and take to pack up. Kath's a free woman, for now. Going back on the 16th, you want yeah, to tell him? Yeah, back on the 16th, um, and they will reconsider it again. But um, I don't think a lot is going to happen. It's just going to be probably a caution. So I'm back on the 16th. I could breathe for a couple of weeks. <laughs> in it. But there's more trouble around the corner. Well, my rush in the car... I about the car on the line. The car had been there too long. Is that there, isn't it? We can't find the car. 
Where's the police station to? Well, I would find it because you know what? I'm going home. I've had enough. Oh. I've had a plenty enough of you. Love, please don't. Love, don't call me love because I, I've just had it today. I might bring you to your senses now, Tony. About what's important. I shouldn't have left it there, should I? It's in your car. I shouldn't have left it there. Tell her again. With the car impounded, Tony's hoping his family can bail him out. Can you, can you do me a big favor? Get out for me. Jane, please. Please pay for it. Please. Jane, please. Don't mind about the rent. I'll pay the rent for it. Jane, please. Don't you give it to me? She's got quite a bit of money, but, you know, like relatives, they aren't always as compassionate as you think they are. You know, I don't see my sister from one year to the next. I don't think she thinks I'm alive. Yeah. I'd always get something to relax me and I'm going home. Vernon's taking his first steps towards the new venture. Where are we off to? Uh, Queen's Road Police Station. Uh, to end this peddler's lawsuit application in with £12.50 in my hard earned big issue money to uh, see if I can get a peddler's license. It's not the first time he's had to face the law. I was, I was in a couple of times in trouble when I was young, yeah. I started off with some lollipops. <laughs> Hi, Mum. Uh, I want to add this peddler's application yeah. to be processed. Right, have you got the money with you? Yeah. £12.50? Yeah, oh, that's you brilliant, Mum. Thank you very much, Mum. Thank you. So, how did that go then, Bernard? Oh, it went excellent. It was really nice. They're going to process my application and they've given me a receipt for my money, which I'll get back if, if I don't get the application. But, right, hopefully, I'll keep my fingers crossed. I'll get a license now. I'll be able to sell stuff. Tara Walsh has her hands full. Her income support has to feed five hungry mouths. Five kids: Kira, Callum, Declan, Connor. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, kids should have mum and dad, but I'm mummy and daddy. Tara's no stranger to being skinned. She used to live in Birmingham with her partner Tom. Get plastered, you bastard. Go away and get drunk. Although things were tight, Tom and Tara always managed to find the money for two things their children and drink. Alcohol was slowly destroying their lives. After Tara gave birth to their fifth child, Tom suffered a seizure. Big changes have happened. The illnesses happened. If it wasn't for the mole stroke, if that's what I've had, I wouldn't be sitting here. The bottles would be done, the food would all be cooked. <laughs> I'd be up the shops getting more beer in, God knows what. Something had to change. Now living in Blackpool, Tara's adapting to life as a single mum. I've changed. The children have changed. I know I look better in myself than what I was from the last programme. And today, Tom lives alone in Birmingham. Because I had the stroke. She had the baby and it was stress. It was too much stress for her. She couldn't cope with it. And then me carrying on drinking just made it worse. Many of people will say, you could see who dragged you down and things like that, who brought you to that level and things like that. But as much as I'd say that, it's like, well, I let myself go. Well, I had a choice. Pack up drinking, keep Tara and the kids. Or carry on drinking, lose Tara and the kids. Well, we were arguing a lot at the time, so it was just making matters worse. I carried on drinking. And she'd done the right thing. She did. Tony's rescued his car, but it's come at a price. So how much, um, how much did it cost you to get out? 
135 pounds. My ex-sister-in-law, her husband, lent me the money. There wasn't nobody else to ask, so they, they helped me have that big favour I had, and I, ne I needed a car to get around. £135 is another debt that they can't afford to pay. To raise some money, Tony's off to an old haunt, cash converters. They'll take your electrical goods and other household items in exchange for cash. He sold his last few possessions for just over a fiver. Stop it there. He's one of Dave Rowland's regulars. This is um, Tony's radio. Clock radio, there you go. It was Tony's radio. Well, it was, yeah. So we'll pop that on here. Yeah, he's brought his stuff in this morning because basically it's all he's got left. Because he sold everything else. He's, he's, um, TVs, um, videos, you name it, he sold it. And that's about the last of it now. With no income other than Tony's small pension, Kath's trying to get them back to work. Uh, my name's Kathleen Hyme. I've done a lot of fundraising in my time. I used to have money. Uh, not a lot of money, but it was enough to tie me over, but... I was going out every weekend down to my nightclub. Used to enjoy it, but now... Now we let Kath move in. Um, no. I must be quite honest, no. I'm from the old school. I'm, I'm um, like, 50. And, um, but I, I've got... Everybody says my telephone manner is really good. There ain't a lot you can do when you're skint, is there? There ain't a lot you can do. You just skint your skin, ain't you? With less money being spent on alcohol, Tara can afford to stock up. Do you have more money that you're not with Tom now or less? So I don't, how does it work out for you? I have a lot more. On a weekend, me and Thomas would be going to the pawn shop because we've got no money and like one of us would want a drink or, you know, well, basically Tom would want a drink. And then I would have a drink with him because he's drinking. So it was just back to the normal mode again. On the monthly pay, I do. I go mad. I really do. I could go to the council and shake myself in a minute without being <laughs> done over. <laughs> This is the scary bit now. Right, that's 14, 56, 75. I'm going to do a bad shop, actually, for a change. I'm going to spend some money now. I'm going mad. Vernon's been buying goods fit for a king. <laughs> He's hoping that his speculating will result in some accumulating. Collecting a few things around all the research shops, because what I'm going to do is go to the auction house. So like, I'm trying to change my stance a bit by going to the auction houses, because it's all proper name stuff, what I'm picking out. And it's all in the books of uh, Miller's Guides. I've got the antique collectibles guides of Miller's, and you just look in the index at the name of the stuff, and you can look it up straight away. How much do you think you've spent on stuff? I've spent about 80 to 90 pounds on stuff in the last three days. I my earnings, and um, I bought stuff like this. Like, it's similar to Clavis Cliff, but it's DC. I paid a fiver for that, and I'm going to put, like, a £20 reserve on it. Yeah, I've done it before, I, I, and I lost out of it, because I never put a reserve on them. I just said to the always bidder, and I lost out of it. I always know now to put a reserve on stuff. So, uh, if I get £200, I'll be well happy. I will, because I will have just over doubled my money. The local auction house will reveal just how precious his collectibles are. I've been actually collecting stuff since I was 11. Stamps and coins and postcards and... With my mother, I used to collect. There's just a bit of a queue for the valuations, but I think I've made it. I made it for the valuations. So, like, hopefully, to value my stuff and stick it in auction. 
To help pay off his car debt, Tony's agreed to taxi a relative around. It's going to earn him five pounds. Oh, it's the time. That's better, isn't it? Cars. Who would have them? Get a fag. I get stressed out. I'm gonna have right. two pounds. Please. Yeah, okay? Thank you. Just can't stand it. Tony's in business. All right, yeah, I'm no, all right. Yeah. thanks a lot. Thank uh, bad news. None of it can go in the auction. It's not good enough for the auction. The values are too low to put into auction. You've got to come up with better stuff, he said. He said the postcards was like a fiver for the lot. I must have paid a pound or two each for them. So I spent about £30 on them as wife did. Well, if, if I get my trader's licence, I, I, I the raw mile in a bit, and my trader's licence has come through from the police, I'll be able to do them on the street anyway, so I'll get me money for them, boy, boy, crook. But, yeah. Funny audience, she said, wasn't it? By like Tesco's. She says she should be there at two o'clock. Do you mind taxiing people around? I know, I don't mind it. It's just that I don't like, um... Calf don't like it, I don't think. I don't get much out of it, do I? The meter's running, but there's no sign of Tony's passenger. Can you phone her, or has she got it? No, she... I can't ring her. I ain't got no credit on my phone. Shall I have a quick look round there a minute? I don't want to leave the car... ...here. They might tow it away, like I did last time. No son of a miser. They're not here, are they? That's cost you now, though, hasn't it? Yeah. I think it's something there's a bit. It was always down, and what a waste of power I wasted there. Morning, folks. Just woke up, I have. Vernon's trying a new approach to sell his collectibles. Uh, I fed up of a dressing log big issue all the time, you know. I got to a couple of smart clothes, so I thought, I've got to go see the book dealer, so I want to look smart, so he doesn't think I'm desperate, it gives me less money, you know. An old Rupert, I think, is in there. Oh, yeah, look, there he is. Rupert the Bear, I'm sure it's an original from when he started off. Oh, it's solid silver brush. I said, no, to the markings, and it's Birmingham, the anchor. I've got biggles there. And he's really sought after, look, the black pen on board Biggles, the first edition. <laughs> my dad would remember all those, if he was still around, but I... He went last year, my dad did. But he used to collect all those, like, collectibles and antiques. And my mother was a collector, that, that's how I sort of got into it. A local collector is Vernon's first target. Hello, hello, this is Mr Burgess. Uh, what it is, I've got some, a, a book collection for sale. I've got about 50 books in the, in the, in the suitcase. I only wants to buy 400 books. Not the Robert Louis Stevenson or the Dickens. OK, no problem. So only buying 500 books at a time. Dreadful. <laughs> I think we'll go to the book deal list for now. I always come to these dead ends like me, you know. Yeah. Keep going, yeah? Don't give up. Tony's home empty-handed, only to find that Kath has her hands full with a drink. You're different than me. You're, you're, you're happier when you're drunk. <laughs> More to 
Do I appear drunk today? No. That's, Am I happy? It's coming. I can be happy whether I've had a drink or I haven't had a drink. Do you think you become a different person when you've had a drink, though? Uh, last night, yeah, I can become more He's aggressive, very, very but violent. no, yeah, yeah, and why? Because you locked me in last night. You didn't even let me go out. So why did I become like that? Because you wouldn't. You got him sat in front of the door. You can always tell by the way she acts. She's been drinking. She has, haven't she? How come you end up drinking in the day? Mm. Um. I always said to people, this is equivalent to a fag. I don't smoke John. I never touch cigarettes. I've never touched crack cocaine. I've never touched any drug substance in my whole entire life. And that's no excuse, but I don't know. It's the effect, I think. It just makes you relax. The drinking really became very severe when I met my second husband because he drank anyway. He was an alcoholic my second husband, and it didn't help because he used to drag me in all the pubs. He'd say, oh, come on, have an orange juice. Then he put some brandy in it. That's no good, because in the end, I got hooked on it, I think. Pretty too, so I don't think I'll get as much as I expect. Hold on, I've got some books I have, though. There's some Robert Louis Stevenson and Dickens' books in there. Big Halls. There's that one. Yeah, I'm afraid that they're, they're, most of them are uh, no commercial value, really. Yeah. Because they're just ordinary, um, popular reprints of things, you know. Yeah. So nobody would really be interested in giving any money for no, them. No, OK, suspect, darling. So. No problem. Thank you very much, too. Nice to meet you. Thank you. So I told you I always come to dead ends. Never mind. Looking after five children is an expensive business. To fund the weekend away, Tara had pawned all her valuables. Now payday's here, she can finally get them back. Do you miss all your jewellery, I think? Yeah, yeah. It's like, you know... It's a statement at the end of the day as well. I feel better for it, you know what I mean? Shows like, you know, my, more, my money hasn't just gone to waste. Do you know what I mean? I'm wearing something to show for it. As well as buying her jewellery back, Tara's been feathering her nest with some stylish appliances. Is it nice to get things you want, though? <laughs> yeah, it's all right, yeah, because, you know, Shows the kids, like, you know, this is how, you know, life should be. And, you know, Aww. when you're older, you know, you want nice things, you want good things. You know, you can't always have nice things and good things, don't get me wrong. But, you know, while you've got a little bit of um, change behind you, you should be able to do it. Ooh, ooh, look at Tara with the dice that she never had wrong with Thomas. <laughs> I just turned the fucking thing up. <laughs> Tony and Kath have finally heard some good news which could sort their debts. He's got a job interview. When was the last time you did a job interview, Tony? Tell me about that. Um, for the council, pretty two years, 23 years ago. Long time, innit? Oh my god, Tony. They think I've won the pools in here. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tom. This is strange. It looks like a building site. Ain't got anything in there, is it? Looks like it. I just hope the car will be all right here, won't it? Yes, I'm staying here, Tony, aren't all right, I? Okay. Good luck, Tony. Huh? Good luck. <laughs> Our day centre yeah. is in Abbots Lee, across, across Bristol. Yeah. If you were successful today, the, the job is to drive them there. Yeah. Drop them off, come back and do some garden in between. Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah. then come back again. Yeah. So yeah. we'll go we'll go in for an interview, okay? Yeah, okay. And then, uh, so okay. There's two more guys gonna help me with interviews, okay? Right, okay. Hello, all right. Come here. Vernon's found one last shop to try and recoup some of his investment. 
I mean, there's no real interest to me. I mean, I'm going to pay a fiver for it just yeah. to put in my car. No, that's you know, that, That's just rubbish. Okay, that. no I problem. Mean, no, no, no other brilliant. interest in that, but yeah. no one uses brushes anymore. Look, no. I'm just going to put it in my cabinet with all the other bits of silver. And the silver's on the up. It might might go up one day, but, you know, I won't hold my breath. All right, then. No oh, that's brilliant, Don't Gaffer. Do. Thanks ever such a lot, mate. Nice one. Good luck, anyway. Yeah, a bit of a result. Collecting mm -hmm. news, I am. Hope you pay. Okay, nice, Sam. See you again, nice. <laughs> Sam. Right, Sam, you're going to have to get out of here. Yeah, right. Tara's kids are back from school, and they too have a treat today. Aww. I need a tea. Okay. Although they arrived in Blackpool with nothing, life now is a little bit richer. Are you happy? Yeah. A lot happier, a lot happier. A lot more freedom in my life. You notice, know, look. You got your rings there! Yeah. Once Connor's gone to nursery and things, I want to get back onto my education and things and just get on with life. But that isn't so easy for Tom, who's currently living in a hostel. I'm trying to move on and do my own little thing without bothering anybody. And the last thing she needs is me banging that door every weekend. Just upset the children, upset her, upset me. You were together for so long, weren't you? We were. Did you think it would last forever? Yes, I did. I thought we'd have grown old together, but that's life. So what do you guys think of your new house? It's excellent. Thing. It's wicked, man. <laughs> Vernon's new venture has made him just a fiver. It's now back to the drawing board. I've got some good news and some bad news. Uh, the good news is I got my twelve pound fifty back off the coppers at Sea Lace Line. They've given me twelve fifty. It was a deposit I paid for a trader's license application. So I could get a street trader's license, so I'd be able to sell perfume and aftershave and you know, little commodities, you know, on a little stall, you know, it's a nice street. But uh, the thing was, they never had any more applications left to give out. They'd give too many out already, so I was refused. So what I'm going to do is carry on doing the big issue and get some big issues with it. Thanks very much. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Okay. I'm proud of you. Have you got a chance? You've got a chance like everybody else has got a chance. Yeah. I, won't, so, I, I, I don't I know did, what else to say. I'm quite overcome. I, did, I didn't muck it up. Oh, they like me so you. much. i got to give them a kiss. They like me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Next time on Skint, Christmas is coming and Gaz is feeling broke. I wish I had the money. 290 quid, I think. We meet Nick Faber, who is feeling rich. 7,500, 103. I'm up by about five here. And Vernon's newfound talents are proving profitable. Six quid, seven quid. I never used to be able to play at all.